Hello, my name is Megan Hammond from Hamilton County, Nebraska. I'm a sixth generation family farmer and after college I moved home to farm with my family and we farm corn, soybeans, we have 200 head of cattle, uh, we have cows and chickens and we are currently on the route of the proposed Keystone XL export pipeline. We are at a place we call the Ozarks. We have lots of different things going on down here, from the horses to the cows to the goats and the chickens. This is a place where we do most of our livestock production. So I'll just show you some of that. This farm used to be corn and soybeans and is now planted to several different types of grasses. And we have it squared off into paddocks for our 200 head cattle operation that we use to raise grass fed beef. We are very attached to this land, especially right here, because my dad is from western Nebraska, where it's um, more ranch land, um, grassland out there. And this is a small piece that reminds him of his home. So, um, and it's just very important to our cows and all of our livestock in general to uh, have this grassland. So, this is Mr. B. This is Barack. To be a part of the No Keystone XL campaign uh, is a big deal to us, especially since we're on the route of the pipeline. It means to us uh, the future of farming in our family. Me being the sixth generation, it's not about me. It's about the future. And we inherit the land and we try to just leave it better than it was passed on to us. So. The barn is the brainchild of uh, Bold Nebraska director Jane Klebb. And the minute we heard about it, we were on board. The land where the barn sits is in the direct path of the proposed Keystone XL pipeline. And the barn is a symbol of clean, green, renewable American energy. And if the pipeline was to be built, they would be tearing down American green energy uh, for foreign dirty tar sands. And that's the significance and the, the symbol that the barn represents. And before it was even built, it had a huge impact on the local neighbors and the U.S. Everybody paid attention to what we were doing here. It was a big deal. And people from all over the U.S. came. In two weekends, we constructed the barn and donations came in from all over the U.S. to help us build it. And it was about three weeks before we were going to harvest the crops here. And farmers around us were like, oh, you're crazy for shredding your crops for a barn like this. And uh, we just thought it couldn't be a better way to shout out what we stand for. And we stand for green energy, green, renewable American energy. Tell me, why is it so important to you? Why do you care about fighting the Keystone Pipeline? Why do you care about clean energy? Okay, there's many reasons. So property rights is number one. The land is number two. The water is number three. It's all important to us. Most importantly is the land and water. Um, we've seen what years of bad farming can do to the land, how hard it is to get out chemicals. And uh, tar sands aren't meant to flow through this part of the country. It's not meant to flow at all. It's not flowable oil and it's not good for our land. I've never seen anything that horrible. It's just complete devastation of that land. And they say that they reclaim what was, but there's no way you can do that much damage and get it even halfway as close to what it was. We are so close to being moving forward into a clean, green energy way. And it's right there, the technology is there. It is waiting for us. But we have to clean up our politicians and let them know that this is what we want. We have to move and speak loudly and get everyone together and push forward our message that uh, tar sands of the past isn't going to sustain life in the future. We need clean green and it's almost becoming too late. We need it now, not tomorrow, we need it now. <laughs> to be the next generation and to be a female, uh, it's empowering. 
I'm forging ahead and uh, there's not too many of us these days. Uh, the ratio of men to women here, I don't know. It's tough, but it's pretty fun. It's empowering, so. I grew up in the 60s and 70s and, and the Kennedy era of ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. And now we need to do it on a global level. And I believe that my daughter is doing exactly that. And I am thrilled that, that the next generation is stepping up and, and being heard. And we need more of that. And, uh, and also coming back to the farm, uh, you know, my wife and I worked very hard to put together the land that we did, and I'm thrilled to pass it on to someone that I love. So it's very gratifying, and uh, I'm just really, really happy that she's very active in fighting this pipeline. What put you on this path of being you know, so determined and militant about that? Well, it runs deep in my family history, my grandpa. Um, always stood up for uh, water rights, uh, particularly in Nebraska, and we have a, a aquifer below us, and uh, it's very precious water, and if we spoil that, we will have spoiled generations to come, so.